this will be a 160 literary. Unlike any other authorization bill, as no one knows better than the chairman of the Appropriations Committee, this bill pays for what it promises right in the bill through the Violent Crime Control Trust Fund, which I wish I could say I was smart enough to have thought of that. It was my idea. But in fact, it was the brainchild of two leading Republicans and the leading Democrat. The bottom line, to use that trite phrase, is it is a mechanism by which what is promised in this crime bill is paid for in a trust fund. The trust fund now holds $30.2 billion in savings related to the Federal Workforce Reduction Act over the next six years. Put in simple terms, the president, President Clinton, has reduced the federal workforce to a level lower than any other time since I have been a U.S. Senator 22 years. And if I am not mistaken, I believe all the way back to the administration of John F. Kennedy in the early 1960s. In addition to that, he has said, and we have legislated in the Congress, that we will further reduce that workforce by over almost a quarter of a million people over the next six years. That is in absolute numbers. They are the final total reduction. So what is happening here is we have asked the different committees with jurisdiction and the different offices at the state and local levels, how much money is going to be made in savings from this cut in the force? The federal workforce over the next six years. I might add, we have exempted in that workforce, cut federal law enforcement officers as part of that. So we are not stealing from Peter to pay Paul. We are not suggesting that we are adding more police and we are adding more law enforcement. And at the same time, cutting federal law enforcement, we are not doing that. I know the presiding officer and my colleagues understand this full well, but sometimes our jargon here in the Senate is very confusing to people listening to debate. So to say it again, this bill pays for itself. It pays for what it promises, not by new taxes, but by the reduction in the workforce. They are taxation dollars. We will hear people who still want to oppose this bill come to the floor and say, this is another Democratic big spending bill, and it is going to raise your taxes. The presiding officer has heard me say time and again, the legitimate argument to be made by my friends on the Republican side who choose to make it is that this crime bill will, in fact, not allow a further reduction in taxes it will not increase taxes. There are two arguments we made here on the floor, as the presiding officer will remember. When the presiding officer and others came up with the idea of the trust fund, some stood up and said that this saving, which we all acknowledge is going to come from cutting the federal workforce, uh, we should have to reduce the deficit. That is a legitimate point. That is a reasonable argument. In November of last year, the vast number of us, Democrat and Republican, said no. We think the crime problem in America is so great, is so dire, is so bad that we have to put a plan in place that will endure for five years so law enforcement officers can plan ahead. We do not say to the Defense Department, we are going to construct a plane this year and maybe next year we will, or perhaps not. We, in effect, say here is what we are going to commit to in the out years so you know you can plan. We basically said for the first time here for American law enforcement, we are not only going to appropriate for next year, we are going to make a promise. We are going to establish a trust fund. So we promise them that they can plan on X amount of dollars from the federal government to assist in the states to fight crime over the next five years. And we have now said six, although we cannot bind the sixth year. However, it is a commitment. 
it is a difficult commitment for the five years. So if my friends argue against this bill and want to come back and argue that the trust fund should be going to reduce the shortage instead of fighting crime, that is legitimate. That is a legitimate argument. And there are some men who would argue that is the best thing to do. And I do not criticize anyone who says that. But I do take issue with anyone who will come and say that this means $30 billion in new taxes, and it's a big spending program over six years. They will not even say over five years. They will say $30 billion in new taxation. That is not correct. That is not a fair argument. The first is, the second is not. So back to my main point. This bill pays for what it says for trading federal bureaucrats, for cops and bureaucrats, for prison cells and bureaucrats, for state judges and bureaucrats, for state prosecutors.